So we had shown the, uh, <clears throat> basically the power of lambda is the same as multiplied by the power of the A matrix when, lam when lambda is a eigenvalue and as long as X is an eigenvector. So we saw it happen with the squared. So if you have a, a to the N, so we're having the same supposition. So we're gonna look at AX equals lambda X, but now we're gonna multiply by A uh, to the n, like this. So we have this situation, just a n on each side, and of course on the left we have a n plus 1 x. On the right, I'm going to commute the lambda and a n. So we're comp commuting past n matrices, but that doesn't matter because we're commuting a scalar, so that's totally fine. So we're pushing it past a, 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 n times. And now we're going to break off one on the right side, one a at a time. So we're going to associate like this. And of course that ax is a lambda x. Then we're going to commute again, lambda squared, a n minus well, actually, let's get crazy and do two things at a time. So I'm going to commute and then reassociate at the same time. So bring both my lambdas out. And I already pulled the extra A out. And that's another lambda we get. So let's skip another step and just commute that lambda at the same time. So drop the A by one, move another A over. So I think you get the point of you can keep doing this over and over and over again. And I'm worried I may have messed my sub superscripts up or exponents. Let's see. Oh, we're okay. We got n plus one total on the right side. All right. So here is where we're going to write dot dot dot. So we're just going to count how many more times this process would happen. So how many more lambdas would I get? So ignore just from, ignore the lambdas we already have, those three, the lambda, lambda, lambda that's already there. How many more lambdas do I get inside the parentheses? So is it n minus three? So we get n minus three, but there's a, an extra one. So I get n minus three from that plus one. So it'll be n minus two total. So that's what I'll be getting here. So we'll go dot, dot, dot. Lambda cube, lambda n minus two. Oop, no more a's, get those out. Check out all the a's. So total lambda to the n plus one. Hopefully it looks like my additions are right. Yep. And on the right side, somewhere way up there we had oh yeah, n plus one. All right, so it works for uh, a to the n power, lambda to the n power. All right, so we're going to use that theorem and quickly compute something that would take a long time. All right, so this just says compute. How long would it take if I asked you just compute what's in that box right there? Take a little while, right? <coughs> squaring it, whatever, that's not so bad. 30 seconds or so, but <coughs> squaring it and then taking it to higher, higher powers, maybe a few minutes to do that. Now, if I did 175, it would take a very long time. So what we're going to do is use that theorem above We're going to use that theorem above. What is, so I wrote the conclusion of the theorem, well, the conclusion if you put to the nth power. That's the conclusion. What is the hypothesis? Somewhere up here. We need a square matrix, which we have a two by two, so that's good. So only is true when lambda is an eigenvalue and x is an eigenvector. So this theorem is only going to apply if that matrix is an eigen or if this vector here is a eigenvector of our matrix over here. How can we find the eigenvalue? Well, this better be an eigenvector. Let's 
Hopefully it is. How would I find the eigenvalue? This is a process you did not need to do on your quiz because there's no question where I gave you an eigenvector. We did this, I think, a week ago or so. So we could do the uh, lambda a minus lambda i determinant like you did it hopefully on your quiz, but there's another way to do this instead without a determinant. Don't you just multiply the uh, a and x and the x over so, and see what we Yep, multiply a x and hopefully we'll get a scalar multiple of x. If we don't get a scalar multiple of x, we can't use that theorem because we don't have an uh, eigenvector. And then I'll go back to the drawing board and redo our example. But hopefully we're looking at an eigenvector. So we're just going to multiply just ax. So 0 plus 5. Oh, 0 plus 1. And 2 times 5 is 10. Oh, it's not looking good. Oh, that's definitely not an eigenvector. Wow. Huh. <coughs> Alright, so we don't have an eigenvector, so we're going to have to work harder than just finding this lambda and uh, taken to the 17th power. All right, what we're going to do now is find both eigenvalues, if we can, then the eigenvectors. Then we're going to write a linear combination based on those eigenvalues and vectors. So we're going to take a scenic route. So I think today all we're going to have time for is finding the eigenvalues. So let's see if we can get those values. All right, I'll race you. I'll see who's faster. Two or negative one? Any questions on those values? So we still got a minute and a half. Let's see if we can get the vectors. Uh, so what we're going to do is, I think we'll probably want time to get one of them. So remember, we're finding the null, which I wrote that too far over. So we got E2 is null of a minus 2i it's negative 2 1 2 negative 1 so augment with zeros add row 1 done. And that's our x1, x2. So x2 is free. So x2 is t. Negative 2x1 plus x2 equals 0. So negative 2x1 equals x2. x1 equals negative 1 half x2. So x1 is negative 1 half t. x2 equals 1 t. So in vector form, uh oh. Yeah, it definitely should be positive one half. All right, so our x vector 
is one half one times t. Now I don't like fractions, so I'm gonna go one two t like that. All right, so these are all the uh, vectors in the null space of that matrix. So we're going to write E2 as the span of 1, 2. So we'll get the E1 or E negative 1, whatever other value was, we'll get that. And then we'll write a linear combination of those two and then apply the theorem. And we'll get to apply a bunch of fun matrix, uh, algebraic matrix properties as well.